And we are live, Oz Property, Oz Day. It is uh, all the Aussies, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Joe, Joe. Oh, I don't know what, what's going on. So, what's uh, <laughs> how you going, Joe? How was your day, mate? What's what's cracker lacking? Mate, my Australia Day has been fantastic so far. Chilling on the beach in Cronulla. Yeah. No riots, which is nice, and uh, Jeez, just having a good time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was like 2010 or 11. I mean, that was. Oh, was it? No, it's 2008. Ancient history. That's what that is. But how are you, mate? How's your Aussie day been? I was going to put my yeah, flag right. up the back, but I thought I better, I better not <laughs> take it down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know yet. Um, look, it's it's a, it's it's a great day to reflect and just kind of yeah. It's for me, it's I've had a fantastic day. It's it's we were down in Kaima earlier, and and it was just interesting to sort of see the amount of kind of people out and about. We grabbed grabbed a coffee, grabbed a milkshake, you know. We just sat on the grass. It was lovely weather, and and every, I can sort of see why prices down there are like one point five two million dollars. Just crazy prices. Um, but also it was just, and then I spent a lot of the rest of my day doing a bit of research for this as well. So um, yeah, my old deal day. What what uh, what more? So what I want to say. Property and lattes, mate. That's all I can ask for. That's, Property that's my day people. rolled into one. Yeah, so it's going to be a massive session. So for those people that are watching this after the show, we love the comments on, on our YouTube kind of thing. So get, get amongst that because that, that helps us out. Do a like, do a, do a like sort of good stuff. We, we want the questions live as well because we're, all, uh, we're going to be here for as long as you'll uh, have us on the air. So hope you're kicking back <laughs> with a original barbecue perhaps if, while you're watching us. Let us know in Australia you're watching. So should we, should we kick into the quotes of the week before we... Quote of the week, mate. Australia Day quote of the week. What is your quote of the week, Jeff? <laughs> so mine, mine is it is from Mister Mister John Lennon. So Ooh. it's it's kind of interesting because today being a public holiday, and just uh, he, he was talking about life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. So that's that's dedicated to Mister Hayden West. So if because you know, I know how much he hates or loves making making goals and strategies and all sort of stuff. So. He's kind of like, oh, you know, don't need to do the just all A, A, A B, B. So that's uh, if you're watching Hayden, let me know your thoughts on that quote. What about you, Joe? You, you're Googling Aussie Day quotes. Did you get a good one? Or oh, safe? mate, today is Australia Day. So the, the quote I have is from Charles M. Schultz. We all know who that is. Um, don't worry about the world coming to an end. It's already tomorrow in Australia. Ah. Boom. What yeah. more could you ask for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah, very insightful. Very. Okay, mate. So, what what is going to happen today? What are, what does today look like for us? Um, what are we going to be exploring? We're doing a data deep dive, and these are always my favourite. Yeah, today's going to today looks bloody good weather was so to answer your question, but no, I'm in mean, making uh, <laughs> make, I'm living up to my my badge. But no, I think today is was exciting me prepping and getting into the detail and just all that stuff. But I think it's going to be a conversation. We're going to be talking about giving an introduction as to how we actually unpack certain areas and, and just back and forward. And, and this is obviously just a very high level. This is not every kind of reach. We can't unpack the whole uh, whole nine yards or whatever you want to call it is in, in an hour, hour and a half session because otherwise it probably yeah. takes about five, ten hours. But that's what it's going to be. It's going to be and, – and, and it's going to – there's going to be a deal that Joe is uh, has done significant – I mean, not, maybe not significant yeah. due diligence, but, but he's, he's yeah, looked, well, looked it up and – the whole point is right. Southeast Queensland is absolutely booming. It's on fire from a property investment perspective. Everybody is loving it. Everyone's talking about it. Um, but what we want to do is go in all of South, you know, all of Queensland, the narrow in Southeast Queensland, the narrow in Moreton Bay, and then break those down into SA threes, and then break them down even further into the suburb that everyone selected from the group. The group voted, everyone, we gave you open slather of all of Moreton Bay and which suburb you wanted to go for a deep dive in. And everyone decided on a fantastic little area called Deception Bay. Now, a funny story is I actually have a property in Deception Bay and um, I called up a I called up a pest and building inspector to go do the best and building inspection. I'm like, so what are your thoughts of Deception Bay, right? I wanted some on the ground knowledge of, of the area. And he's like, oh, you mean that place? Uh, you, they call it D-Bay here. Um, that's where the postman bit the dog um, <laughs> instead of vice versa. <laughs> Was this before you bought the property or you mean recently? No, not recently. No. Okay. <laughs> no but that, that's, that, that's interesting though because I, I, I've got some I, – I know, I know people, the data divides people so badly. It's kind of like – it. 
But um, but I think it, it's interesting looking at, uh, well, go into that. You have to stay right to the end because I've got some kind of insights. Mm-hmm. And I think there could be a bit of a change of narrative in, in the de- in the dog biting, in the postman biting the dog. Maybe it's going to be the other way around. Maybe maybe uh, maybe it's changing. Maybe there's a wind. I don't know. Feel free to disagree with me, Joe, and other people. But, um, yeah, mm-hmm. based on my quick research. But, yeah, let's let's get cracking into it, of course. And um, just ex- and it was chosen by our guests for next week, Mrs. Uh, or Miss Jackie Skeen. She's oh, really? uh, going to be, yeah. So she was the one who, who put uh, Deception Bay up there as the, as the top. So thanks very Look, much. Got, got the votes. So let's, let's rock and roll into our uh, sponsor and then we'll jump right in. Do it. Selling a property, it isn't something we do every single day. There's actually more involved in the process than you may initially think. Like, how do you find the best agent? How do you ensure that you're gonna pay the lowest fees? It's not easy, and then also throw in all the stress and pressure of selling. And that's why Scott Agate, a former real estate agent and expert property negotiator from Hello House, has created his leading agent finder service. After a 20 year career managing agents himself, Scott has personally conducted over 3,000 property transactions along with running three bell franchises. He knows all these agent tricks. Scott has created an in-depth five step process for his leading agent finder service. First, he establishes the true market value for your property, he uses a triangulation method to shortlist the leading agents, creates a competitive environment for those agents to send through their best proposals, vets those proposals, and then he negotiates the best agent fees for you. This ensures that you're not only getting the best rate for selling, but most importantly, you have a leading agent on your side selling your property to maximize the end sale value. Oh, and did I mention, this service is completely free. If you'd like to know exactly how Scott runs his five-step leading agent finder service, he's detailed it with the link below. Or if you'd like to speak with Scott to help find you the leading agent in your area, book a call today. Here you go. So pe- people are saying they had a uh, get joke. We've got to get go get the shed. So Miri, uh, Miriami said, I think that's sorry if I pronounced your name correctly. So it's a barbecue for tea. I, I love good, good old tea. That's that's what we used to call in the miles. Or we still call that in the miles household. It's funny because people people say tea. It's like, are oh, you going to have a cup of tea? It's like, no, we're having dinner. Just having tea. But uh, but yeah, anyway, that's um, so that was yeah. That's all, all about selling. So. Let's let's dive into I don't know I just wanted to tell a random anecdote. So but we we want to unpack all questions. This is going to be about the value. We're going to be talking specifically about Deception and or Morton Bay. We're not going to talk about Deception. We're going to talk about Morton Bay, Southeast Queensland. But if you just have a question that's keeping you up at night, throw it in and we'll get to it um, as best we can. So should we share the slide straight in? Let's, let's share the slide, Big Jeff. Okay, hang on. Where um, where are we? There you go. Okay, so twenty twenty. There you go. Twenty twenty two. Oz Property Investors Australia Day Edition. Welcome everyone. Great. Day how good is here. how good is that uh, poster? And just if you look sneakily oh, enough, on. can we oh. zoom in? Can we zoom in on that? <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, no, you probably can't. Joking. You're on the slide share. So if we slightly zoom in, uh, have a look. You might have be look able to is. see. A little face he, there. From... <laughs> is he watching? Let us know if he's watching. But, um, is Steve anyway, Khaleesi so, yeah. watching? How good, yeah, he's always watching. Good old Steve. I, I didn't, didn't notice that. So, Mr. Dusting, thank you for doing that. So, yeah, let's Beautiful. Let's Here is our disclaimer. All of this information is not constituted as professional advice by anyone appearing in the show connected to this content. This is not financial advice. We are not financial advisors. You should seek independent legal, financial taxation, or any other advice through the relevance professionals. We are not liable for any of that loss. Read all of that. Soak that in and accept it, please, because we're not giving you any financial stuff. Yep. No. So just, uh, now just we don't have to whole, say it again. Just some wholesome property goodness. Thanks. Thanks, very much. Uh, here we go. Okay. So, so, quick snapshot. I saw this little uh, little ditty in a uh, in on the Queensland government site. So I wanted to give a high level overview of all of what Southeast Queensland is because I know we have a lot of people from Sydney, from Melbourne, from WA, from from Adelaide, from everywhere and Southeast Queensland as well. But you're just trying to give you a bit of an understanding. So Southeast Queensland is going to have an extra 1.5 million people by 2041. That is a 41.38% increase in the population that is already there. Let that sink in. 41% more than we've already got. So um, with low interest rates, strong net mi- migration, 
we've seen an unprecedented demand for housing. So this was an alert sent out by the government saying the demand for housing is so crazy. Overseas migration, which is usually a major component of growth in the state, has diminished as a result of COVID-19, but it's expected to be picking back up. So with that diminishment, it's going to come back even stronger. So that's an interesting one. Inter uh, interstate migration for new residents um, continues reflected in the success, blah, blah, blah. Um, the Brisbane City Council saw 3,300, followed by uh, previous to that was 4,800 and 3,000. It's continuing to grow. These factors are fueling unprecedented demand, placing pressure I on hate, land supply. I hate that word, unprecedented. Bloody hell. Just, we've heard it about 50 times. In, yeah, but anyway, go on. There we so. go. Okay. In response to these growth challenges, the Queensland government has established the growth areas team. No, that's, well, there's a, that's where all our money's going. Sounds like Spruker <laughs> Central growth areas team. Jeez. What the yeah, fuck? that's a that would be I the best need, job ever. You could call it the gap, the gap team. Good old gap. <laughs> Get on the gap. Um. Okay. So what do we got here, Jeff? Uh, so we have. So I just wanted. To, it doesn't sound like a lot of people like three three thousand three hundred to, to Brisbane. Like I don't know. Like that's it seems like. But anyway, let's let's talk about this. So here we have, and it looks like have you pulled this from Wikipedia, Joe? Or just it looks like a Wikipedia graph. Correct, just... mate. Wikipedia graph. You know it. You're onto it. It's, um. It's so very, this is yeah. the this is the overall southeast Queensland. So when anyone talks about southeast Queensland, this is what you can expect to see. That's that's right, yeah. And as, as you can see, it's breaks it. It's the majority of it is when I say majority. If you look at the total population, it would be good if somebody um, had some of those some of those numbers sorted it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's sorted. It is sorted. But you look at that. You look at the top three, or even so, your top three probably make up about fifty to sixty percent. Maybe even yeah. I don't. I don't just doing numbers on a fly. So mind my maths, but. Um, but the interesting one that I sort of look at there is Ipswich, and you sort of say the population base uh, compared to the uh, compared to the size of the area, it's it's just um, yeah. I mean, I, 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 what I'd be interested to know, Joe, you probably don't know this, is how much of that area can actually be um, transformed into housing. I mean, I don't know. I'm just asking. Thinking, thinking I'm no, I have, I have no, I have, I have no idea. Um, but yeah. It'll be interesting to see because that's what's going to drive the demand. And I think that's what's interesting when we're talking about Deception Bay. Um, Deception Bay is quite, believe it or not, deceptive in what it looks like for land supply. So that's going to be an interesting one to talk to. But does more population mean more property prices? No. So okay. I mean, was that, was that a question to me or was that you going to answer? Yeah, like a... yeah, no, no, no. Well, why, I why mean... Does... I, I hate. To, I hate. To, I'm going to see. I'm going to have probably have splinters by in this session. But um, I, it, it, it's, it, it really depends. It doesn't. You can't say that it definitely will. And I mean, people have tried to say it definitely will. But but I think for me, it's it's looking at one factor in isolation is is not is kind of short sighting yourself because they say, oh, yeah. look, you have a hundred or ten thousand people moved to an area. Okay, great. But how many houses are they building? So you, if you only look at the demand side of it. As in, okay, yep, ten thousand people moving to an area, population growing. But if they're building fifteen thousand houses, then okay, then maybe that ten thousand people isn't enough to soak up the supply. Absolutely, is that kind of what you're... that one hundred percent right? Right. Um, we are going to talk about the um, population of the area as well. We're going to deep dive into that. But you're right. If the government is if there's too much supply on the market, then you're going to be high hamstrung and you're going to be not in a good position. So um, you need to watch out what the supply is coming online. And that's what we're going to be doing in this little I'm, session. I'm interested. Yeah, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on the on the land supply for uh, for Deception Bay because I, I, I looked at it and I sort of, I, I, I mean, I don't, I was only taking cursory grants, but we'll leave that till, till later. So you have to keep yeah. staying to see what Joe's thoughts are. Maybe <clears> not. Okay. Anyhow, so one thing that I want to Morton Bay. Okay, so this area here is Morton Bay. Morton Bay is the third largest council in terms of population and size. So you have everything in, in um, Morton, Morton Bay. You have Redcliffe Beaches. You've got Caboolture. You've got all the way down here into parts of oh, – well, it's obviously not parts of Brisbane because it's parts of um, Morton Bay, um, but it's this massive area here. It goes up into the mountains. Um, so 
it's very hard to when you look at the medium price for Morton Bay, it's just not going to give you anything because it's no, it's too much broken down of too many areas and too many locations. So yeah, you can't, what we you like, can't really, you can't really compare if you go back to that one. I mean, I'd imagine Stony Stony Creek and and Woodfords. I mean, I I haven't looked at these areas, so if if somebody actually knows the areas. But I'd imagine there's a lot of acreage out that way and, and you sort oh. of and probably not a lot of sales as well. So you sort of say, I would imagine the median price of that kind of area and medians are completely, not completely, but they are somewhat flawed. So I would say yeah. they're trying to give, that's why you sort of, but there's probably not as many sales, so maybe it doesn't impact the median as much. But, um, maybe. Well, some of the high levels about Moreton Bay, just to give you a snapshot, it is the fifth fastest growing local government area in Australia. Um, and the third largest, which I just mentioned before. And um, there are 1 million workers located within 30 minutes of the region. So there's a lot of people, 1 million people within 30 minutes drive of the region. Um, okay, cool. So let's jump in. So how do we break this down even further? Because this is way too big. So what we do is we break it down to SA3s, which is statistical area three, which is what the ABS and government use they then break it down even further into SA2s and then SA1s. Um, but this is going to give you a better insight around what is actually happening in the particular pockets and areas here. Um, so Morton Bay, what is it here? Morton Bay is one of Australia's fastest growing regions. The population is forecast to grow from 479,639 to 690,000 by 2041 that means an additional 210,000 residents over the next 20 20 years are expected so that's massive another how much percent is that jeff look oh, <laughs> I mean, it's, 50, it's 50 percent basically i mean well about four, let's let's say between 45 and let's say 40 we're 43. probably in line with that other average that we were talking about there that, that 40 odd percent of um southeast queensland and they're saying it's going to have a larger population than Tassie by 2031. Jeez. How great is that? Well, that's the yeah, interesting thing about Tassie. I mean, we'll, we, we will have to do a deep dive in one, one of the locations of Tassie eventually because I, I'd, I'd love to do a lap of Australia. Whether that be, you know, I mean, maybe you can't get into WA for, for years to come. So we'll have to do yeah. it maybe like a property lap. Of okay. Australia. Yeah, I'm with you, mate. Okay, so some of the key things. So this, okay, so this is a data deep dive, and we're going to start talk statistics and numbers and population and growth and employment and infrastructure and stuff like that. That just gets so confusing and is really annoying and difficult to understand because you're trying to like I don't care about this stuff. I just want to pop. I just want a property. So let's have a look at the demand drivers. We have population, which is a demand driver. The employment of the area the desirability of the area and the projects of the area. Then the negative side, maybe not negative, but supply is the sponge that soaks up all of this demand. So supply is a demand sponge. So this all accumulates into demand drivers for the area. That's all you have to know. So when you're researching an area, research the population, research the employment and the diversity of the employment, research how desirable that area is, what projects are coming on the market and how they're going to interact and affect people. And then what's the supply coming on the market? Yeah. Done. Oh, I, 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 I want to, uh, I want to s sort of jump in there and, and add to, to some, to along this, I'm okay. sure we'll talk about it, but just to say, for those who may not be able to watch the whole show, I think a, a crucial thing, which you've just done is, is getting on the ground and actually knocking on kind of real estate, real estate agent stores and, and all that sort of, and, and just actually eyeballing and pounding the pavement and all that sort of stuff. What do you, what do you thought, what, what, what sort of credence would you, would you owe or, or add to, to the on the ground kind of stuff, Joe? Oh, we'll talk to on the ground. The, we'll talk to the on the ground stuff because Deception Bay, as I said, is a little bit deceptive. Deception's, Deception Bay is actually broken up into two to three areas. So there are areas where you should buy. There's areas where you shouldn't buy. And the only way, the only way you can figure that stuff out is by getting on the ground and doing the research yourself. There's no other yeah. way. You can't, or get some, you know, or you know, get an expert to do it for you, or do a lot of research, speaking to property managers and, and locals and getting on the phone. Like you can do it, not remotely, but you're not going to fully understand it. And also this is going to be one of the biggest investments of your life. Get on a plane. Like planes are super cheap right now. Super cheap. Get on. 
Okay, guys, yeah. let's go through this one really quick. Um, so this is just a high level overview snapshot. I'm going to try and zoom this in a little bit more um, of uh, what happened with COVID in terms of net internal migration. So why is everyone banging on about Queensland? Just look at the numbers. New South Wales lost 17,796 people. Victoria lost 18,000. Who gained? ACT, South Australia, Tasmania, WA, and Queensland with an overwhelming 30,785 people. That is absolutely mental. So that's great, right? That is a, um, an amazing amount of supply and the exact same. And then this is another um, breakdown. Sydney cities, Melbourne, they are leaving there. They're flocking to the regions. Yeah. You can see Perth has 5,149 people, regional New South Wales, regional Victoria, Brisbane, and regional Queensland, again, at the top spot there. So this is people, this is this whole tree change, uh, sea change thing where people are realizing that they can work remotely, they can get jobs done, um, and they've left. Now, I'm, what we want to know... I'd be sorry, interested man. to see this in, um, in, in 2022 or 2023 because... I mean, I'm, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't, I still see that there are people talking about moving to Queensland or moving to regions. So, but so I think we've, yeah, got quite, yeah well, this is an acceleration. So, one of the other slides that I had previously, but I culled it, um, was that you can see this trend has been happening for the whole time. There is a spike in um, COVID, but this trend has always been happening. People are starting to accelerate and leave the big cities and go to the regional Queensland, go to the regional Victorias, go to South Australia's, those type of things because of that. Yeah. So I think this is a trend that's, that's well, it's going to stay, especially as technology gets even better. Yeah. I suppose it looks at net internal migration. I, I'd, I'd actually be interested to, I mean, not, not to kind of, uh, I mean, not to poop the idea of moving to smaller, but I, I'd like to see the, the actual, uh, the, my, the, the growth of population of these areas because I, 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 I suspect that New South Wales and, uh, and Victoria, these populations aren't going backwards. Um, but, yeah, anyway, that's just, that's just my, okay, I, I think, yeah. You, you can, yeah, we can do that. I will. Cool. Okay. Jeff, what's it's great about, great. what's so great about Morton Bay? Jeez, man, this is a pretty snazzy sort of. Did you, did you do this up, Joe? Or it looks looks pretty it looks pretty snazzy. Let's just say, man. let's just say yes, with the help of a government <laughs> document. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it probably no, cost fifty thousand dollars of taxpayer money to create this, yeah. create this document. So, so for, first, first up, so we're, we're talking about Morton Bay, and I've, I've actually I've, I've got sort of relatives in the area in the sort of Morton Bay region. So it's um, having having sort of I haven't been there for many years now, but just kind of knowing if there is a lifestyle. You've got you've got the beasts in Redcliffe, and you've got the the new Redcliffe Dolphins, I think they're called that team that joined the rugby league. So you got you got top class. I mean, I don't know about. Terry Reese may argue they're not top class, but you've got you got some of those really cool factors in that area. It's it's saying that it's one of the enviable lifestyles in the country. I don't know about that. That's a bit of a yes, argument. But, uh, but let's let's say that there is there is certainly if I if I think back to my time there, Redcliffe even sort of six or seven years ago was was quite was quite luxurious in terms of and, and even sort of somewhat expensive. You had those sort of luxury apartments, so. I think it's lifestyle-wise and the cafes and those mm. sort of things. So yeah, well, bri the the, we even have Bribie Island in Moreton Bay. Bribie yeah. Island, you get a bridge to it, and it's a lovely little area, and, and that's beautiful. Under mosquitoes, um, so under mosquitoes a bit shocking, though, I've heard. I don't know. I've never been, but I heard it's nice. <laughs> um, so, look, what have they got here? Waterfalls, coastline, right, infrastructure, um, and then room for future growth. So over the last 20 years, the region has plenty of room to grow. So this is from the government. This is interesting. Read through this kind of stuff. But again, look at what this is talking about. Lifestyle, which is desirability. Workforce, who is working there? What is the employment breakup? Desirability, uh, we're back to lifestyle and desirability, I guess, with tourism access. And then access to market, which is like employment again. And then um, room for future growth. So good. Yeah. Thank you, Governor. Yeah, the interesting thing is the um, the the narrative there that they pointed marries up with with what they're actually doing because you often, I mean, of course they're going to sail they're going to sail this stuff. The um, they, they, these are this is the kind of sales team of the of the government to attract people, but but if once we look into the infrastructure and the information there, um, yeah, there you go, the projects you should be able to see that they're, I mean. 
not spending trillions of dollars, but certainly kind of, uh, well, not even billions, yeah. actually, but they're sending hundreds of millions. So let's go through this really quickly. Population again, who are the people living there and are they driving capital growth? What's employment, Big Jeff? Uh, employment is is about the the types of industries that are, that are in a town. So it's you, you really, as, as Joe says there, or it, this is his slide he put together, but he says you want a diverse workforce. So to mention kind of, I saw a post somebody talk about they bought a whole bunch of properties in a mining town or mining couple mining towns. I'm like, and I said, okay, that's great that it's you've now like tripled your money. What happens when when the, when they decide to shut down the, or the mine no longer needs that accommodation? So I, I, I'd hazard to say that it's the cycle will um, repeat itself. So you'd sort of see a drop off, a, probably a, a significant drop off in prices. So you want to see that kind of stuff. Um, sorry, you want to see a a diverse array of, of types of employment. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Absolutely. And, if there's a one, if it's a one horse mining town, it's not going to be any good. I just love this sponge as well. So this is the so, supply yeah. sponge. This is the demand drivers of demand projects. What are the big projects? One thing actually to mention on projects is, you know, we're going to, we're going to say some big numbers. We're going to say two, $2 billion infrastructure spent. Is it 2 billion on, on roads? overall was, or something yeah two yeah, billion yeah, dollar road upgrade parts of now if that road upgrade goes around your suburb then that's not a good thing <laughs> it's a bad thing because it's going to drive people away from you so you need to understand what are these uh, infrastructure projects doing and then we've got our supply sponge as well so back to that okay cool uh deception bay let's talk to deception bay oh morton bay <laughs> the slides are all mixed up Okay, Jeff, this is all you all know. Right. What have we got going on? So here we, so here we go. This is, this is just, um, I mean, there's, they're spending $220 million in four years, which is, which is not a small sum, I would say, for an area of about, uh, I think it was about, what, 30, what was it? Was it 30,000 people? Or that maybe, maybe it's more than 30. No, it was a lot more than that, actually. If we go back, then it was like 100, 200,000. 200, um, so, but, but Morton Bay is spending, so they're, they're investing not only in sort of roads, which, you kind of look at, yeah, you, you see that's kind of the, there's a connection road there to improve connectivity. There's also another, so it's 38 million on that one. There's 68 million to improve how many vehicles. So they're anticipating a lot of people are going to move and a lot of people are going to travel to the area. And and yeah. people, I suppose, that may travel to the city, to Brisbane, where, where wages are, are probably a little bit higher. So that and they're able to come back and sort of have that lifestyle. So I think for me, there's, there, there are some, and the other thing they're investing in, um, and, and one thing I note there is this one is a potential project, but they've so they've only committed twenty six million to to undertaking a feasibility study. Sounds like a lot to, for a feasibility study, um, but it's a knowledge and innovation kind of center. So they're really looking to invest in if if that sort of type of thing gets gets on board, you sort of start to see higher paying jobs um, come into the region and, and stay there. So um, the other one that I thought was pretty cool was a sports upgrade complex, which um, which I think is important because. You, you want to have that adds to me adds to the desirability of an area because you've got if you've got the you've got a couple of kids who you want to you, you want to, or if you're a, you're a, a, a sports person you want to have that fitness that lifestyle kind of play and factor as well so are there any this is kind of asking a question um, obviously um, but are there any kind of particular projects that are better than others? I, I haven't thought, hadn't thought about the show, but um, but my 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 thoughts, um, and and this is me, me sort of thinking on the, on the spot. So I, I would say that yes, roads are, are imperative and important. I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm going to point out one area, and and of course this is this is a, a an exception probably rather than rule. But you look at a place like Byron Bay, the roads to Byron Bay are absolutely shocking. I don't know if I've been there a couple, like you just you can't. I'm, it's a one lane road in, one lane road out. You can't get in on a on a busy on a half busy day, but but you see, and of course that's got other factors driving it. But I would say roads help get get a lot of people into the area. Um, but what what I would what, what I would sort of like to see is investment in 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 kind of driving because um, jobs will come with building roads. But once the roads are built, people aren't going to stay there for the job because they're, they're going to move on to next road project wherever it is. I would say things yeah. like um, kind of you either your, I mean, universities are an interesting one, but but things that are, are, are high paying jobs like your innovation centres, like scientific kind of research, or even uh, even bigger businesses. I mean, I'm not going to say you're going to have a big four accounting firm in Morton Bay tomorrow, but if you can sort of, or like a, 
probably like an, I was going to say Bunnings is a funny one because he won't sort of necessarily high paying, but it will create a lot of jobs in the area. So they're the yeah. Kind of- I mean, I have a big theory on Bunnings um, where I believe they spend millions of dollars on research, um, demographics and understanding an area, and they believe that they're going to get a lot more people there. So if Bunnings is willing to put hundreds of millions of dollars worth of um, property there, then it's probably got a lot of research going for it. There's actually someone mentioned Maccas as well. Maccas is a good one. Um, yeah. I also kind of think that Maccas is quite like they're everywhere. So it's not like a massive, massive kind of driver. I feel like they pop up wherever, um, but it is definitely something you see a Maccas popping up. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, and, and now there's another Woolworths. There's another Coles. Um, to mention Costco, some of the Costco in Deception Bay, uh, sorry, Morton Bay as well. I, I know it's there is, so, there is a yeah. Costco. Exactly. Um, so some of the, some of the other projects that are going on, there is the one, $1.2 million Morton Bay rail link um morton bay uh, university Princeton, which is in petrie uh so that's 590 mil- million dollars uh which is the used to be the paper mill it's now converted into a university that's going to produce six thousand jobs for you know the local area so petrie lawton and kalanga and then the westfield in north lakes which is a big precinct which connects a lot of people um north lakes is like a, a kind of hub that's got another 140 million dollars onto it so those yeah. are the type of infrastructure projects that we're looking at. Now, I'm just cautious of time. We're bloody on slides. Okay, so there's a lot going on here, and Thanks. I appreciate that. And you can't see any of it. Okay, so what this is there we go. is population really- growth. Yep. Population growth. Okay, I'm going to try and make this work. So this is 2021, 2026, 2031, 2036, 2041 and overall from 2016 to 2041. So these are the areas that are getting the most amount of population, which in turn are going to get more infrastructure spending, which are going to get more focus from the government to be able to do it. So I'm looking up here. So I'm going to try and zoom this in a little bit more. Where is, where, where is, is, uh, where is Deception Bay there? Was that, was that there? Deception Bay is number 21. So some of the top ones that we're looking for here, looking at here, is Moray Fields, Burpengary East, Moray Fields East, Kashmir Lortman, Narangba, North Lakes, Marumba Downs and Griffin, Petrie Scarborough, Upper Caboolture, Caboolture. Now, Caboolture South, what they're actually doing is creating a Caboolture West and they're growing and expanding that place out massively. So here... Look at the crazy amount of um, population growth that we're going to be seeing in Moray Fields. It's going to go from 4,000 in 2016 to 7,000, and then 10, 15, 20, 24. So really interesting numbers. What I also find interesting is that this suburb here, Upper, is it Upper Caboolture? Yeah. They're not really doing anything. So they're building out the West first. And 18% is a good influx. But then it goes like in year 31, it goes to 44. Then what you want to look at is who are the lower performers. So Bray Park, do I want to go ahead? No, you can't see. Do I want to go ahead and invest in Bray Park if projected in the next, uh, what, 20 odd years, it's going to be projected to lose 1.44 of its population? I mean, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just interject there, Joe. I'm, I hope you don't mind me doing this. Um, no, no, please. Out of but, um, but what I'll say is looking, I, I, would, I wouldn't purely look at this and, and eliminate, um, eliminate a, a suburb. I, I would sort mm-hmm. of say, well, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe I might, I don't know. But you, you sort of, you, you'd have to say, okay, just because an area is, is going to, like let's say the top more A-field is going to grow that, it doesn't necessarily mean straight away you say, okay, I'm going to buy an area where there's going to be a lot of people go. Um, I mean, that's that's just my, I'm not saying that everybody thinks that way, but that's just the way I kind of, I, I like to sort of say, well, that's that's potentially one thing that's a, a bit interesting. I think you'll, you'd probably say that as well, maybe. But Bray Park. It's, an, it's an interesting data point. And we talk about data analysis later on in the, in the show. Um, but it's an interesting point to have a look at and to see where the flow, the inflow and outflow of people are. Where are these people actually going? Where do people actually want to live? And is the government supporting that infrastructure? Is the government supporting this area with infrastructure? So, for an instance, we have Burp and Gary East, which is a fun name to say. Um, 
So Burpengary East is going to get something called the North Harbour Marina. And now um, let's have a look at infrastructure spending for this area. Now, this is infrastructure from overall uh, Moreton Bay. We have one project here, which I believe is the rail. What is it? Brackenridge Pine River. Okay, so a motorway upgrade, a billion dollars. Fantastic. But then we go up here into Caboolture. Look at what's going on up here. We've got this, which is... That's the paper mill, isn't it? Oh, no, that's... Under, under procurement, 551. No, that's not the paper mill. Um, oh, those are all purely infrastructure. And then we have an announcement of $780 million. Then we have Caboolture, Bribe Island, Road Interchange, 663. They're spending a lot of money here, $400 million to expand out hospitals. So expanding out hospitals is an interesting one, especially when we start to talk about the uh, diversity in the area for employment because this area of Moreton Bay, um, we'll talk about that soon, is a big thing for uh, employment. The good thing about health jobs are they're government jobs and they're usually quite secure. Then the Brisbane Roads upgrade that we talked about before and um, Northbridge Bruce Highway upgrade. So one thing to, to mention that's not there is they are doing, did I put this in my slides? I don't know. A $2.7 billion project to expand out the um, Burpengary area. So their government has seen this information and they've said, you know what, we are factoring in this, so let's support that. And where the hell did I put it? Anyway. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I don't need to do But No, I don't think I have either. Um, but to give you a quick snapshot, this is what Burpengary looks like now um, here. And they're going to be putting in a $2.7 billion marina in here to connect it to the lake and make it look pretty and make it a lot more attractive, kind of like what they've done down here in Newport. That's kind of how I envision it. So that's an interesting thing to notice and be aware of. Um, obviously, this map, you've got to check multiple sources for your for your data, um, but this doesn't this doesn't show it here. Um, the thing, the thing that uh, I'd, I'd kind of uh, caution is, is just because there's, uh, I mean, yeah, just because there's, there's money being spent in an area, a lot of yep. roads being built. They, that could be yep. a growth. That could be what they call a growth corridor, which is a growth in terms of popular. They want to encourage people to go to that area. That doesn't yep. That may not necessarily mean it's a great capital growth investment area, if if that makes sense to to the audience. Mm -hmm. So they slightly so a growth corridor can be that doesn't that just means a growth of population doesn't so just be keep, just be cautious and mindful of that so people yes look at that yes again we're talking about going going back to our supply and demand figures sponge. If, if the sponge soaks up all the population the employment the desirability and the projects the supply sponge will suck it all up okay great so one thing to notice what are we talking about here jeff so here we oh, let's, uh, let's probably I should probably look at it myself. Here we are. So we've got uh, this is the Morton Bay overall, and you can sort of see there's a lot of reach. Uh, there's health and healthcare and social is the largest um, industry, and I, I don't, I'm not going to read all of, all of these, but I'm not going to count them all either. But there is, I'd say, at least twenty industries or different types of. Um, the, one, the one thing I find is interesting is that, is that retail is the second highest, which. Retail, uh, for me, is, um, I'm sure re retail workers do a fantastic job. They do an amazing job and all that, but um, they may not necessarily be the highest um, sort of wage wage earning and, and whether they should be or shouldn't be, I'm not, gonna, not here to debate that. Um, but the, the other thing you'd look at is professional scientific and technology. Well, that's one that I always sort of pull out and even construction as well. And so those ones, those ones can be a little higher earning any financial insurance services. So health, yeah. yeah so, so those are the kind of, I look for, when, I, when I'm looking at kind of industries, I look for um, diversification and also what type of industries are actually, um, are they are? What, what kind of things do you look yeah. at for, Joe? Yeah, I look for diversity and I look exactly the same thing. Like it needs to be a big mix. And the good thing is we've got 12%, 11%, 10%, 10%. 8%, 7%, 7%, 6%. So we've got a big mix here. 
Um, that's Moreton Bay overall, again, as a generalization. So if we start to look at uh, Deception Bay, we've got a lot of healthcare and social assistance, which is good. Retail trade, again, construction, manufacturing, transport and warehouse. So it looks very similar. Like these two charts, like what's changing? Not very much. You're getting more healthcare yeah, people. Changes change a little bit. The, um, did you, did you get, is this the ABS starter, is it, or is this from somewhere else? Uh, yeah, ABS, that one. Okay, so it's probably from 2016 then, isn't it? No, it'll be – yes, yeah, correct, correct. So that's – yeah, I mean, that's that's the other thing you have to be mindful of, looking at when this data has come from because, I mean, that's that's five years now. So the, the census data will come out, and, and, and I, I would suspect it's actually changed maybe a little bit. Not, I wouldn't say substantially, but it's probably changed, um, probably um, certainly shifted a little bit. So what are we talking to here, Joe? You want to jump Mate, on this one? We're 40 minutes in. This is ridiculous. <laughs> um, population oh, growth – Yes, yeah, population growth for Deception Bay, 2016 to 2041, we've got 34% more people coming in. That's a 1.76% growth rate. Um, it ranks 21st, like all the way down to 21, we, as we saw on that chart. So that is um, kind of in line with averages for Queen, uh, for Brisbane, I believe, and Queensland. Um, you know, above two is pretty crazy, but 1.7, that's absolutely, um, that's absolutely fine. Now here, we're going to talk about some of the numbers and we created this slide before and it took up a lot of time. So I'm just going to be super high level here, guys. So when you're looking and researching in an area, you want to make sure from, there are some pressures on the market. So days on market need to be trending down listing prices. <laughs> I've done it again. Listing prices need to be trending up. You're going to be seeing wow. those trending up um when the inventory is tight so when um when that happens and vacancy rates are low and we'll do a session about what all of these numbers mean and what they mean different uh, separately um and also building approvals what is being approved uh in the pipeline around that you know 12 months 18 months nine months ago because that's the stuff that's coming online to compete with your properties deception bay okay we're going to talk about desirability here mate what are we talking about here? Should we? Um, so you don't want to dive into just quick. I mean, probably should, we're up what? forty. Do you want to look at the data quickly, or not? Or? We'll go into it. Yeah, let's talk okay. about. Let's go, right. to the, we'll go to this, and then we'll go to the platforms. Yeah, I'll talk about. I'll, I'll bring up a, a tool and, and mindful that this tool is is using census data. From I'm going to quickly share my screen. So I'm going to jump off. Jump off this. So when we when we talk about desirability, I'm using the metrics that. Um, quickly show this let me share the tab because i jump. find this one an interesting one i saw a comment in the comment box by someone that lives in deception bay and the comment was deception bay will never gentrify <laughs> oh i don't know I, I, I don't yeah interesting let's deception say we'll, bay will never we'll bring, gentrify. It, we'll bring it up because it, so we're using microverbs so Yes, this is. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of. I've already prepared it. If you, I mean, if you jump can you on Microsoft, zoom in, Big Jeff. Uh, yep, yeah, I can zoom in on the, the. Is it a bit small? Is it? Yeah, very small. Yeah. Okay. Let me know if this is better, Joe. Is it too big now? No. Is that is that, is that better at all? Share my screen. I'll share my screen. Yeah, it's just not very. Yeah. Here it yeah, is. Are oh, you sharing yours now? Yeah. Yep. So what? what this is a free tool. I mean, I'm sure you can pay for some things, but this is microverb. So what we're looking at here in terms of, and you don't ever want to take this 100. So they, they pretty much take it from the ABS, so 2016 data. So the things that are, I, I was looking at this other night, so in terms yeah. of um, Deception Bay. So if you jump in, Joe, into affluence. So public housing, this is an interesting one. And I, I, I suspect this may have, you see that's quite high for Deception Bay. So, so owing to that person who lives in Deception Bay said that it's not going to gentrify. Um, and, and what you want to look, what you're looking at there, Joe, is you've got the, if you look at that area, it's 52%, I think, or what, how much, uh, jump on that yeah, red. Yeah, so the, this red bit here is 37%. 37, 37. So that, that's where there's a higher concentration of public housing. So um, I've got an issue to other people, well, you probably disagree with this one, I'm this one, Joe, but I'd say that uh, so people would say you should avoid it investing in areas. I'm not saying you should go and buy it straight away, but I, I would sort of say it might be potentially an opportunity. I'm not saying you should buy, um, but I, I just think, uh, of course, you have to be mindful of it. I'm not saying go and buy it because you, you don't want to, you want to understand what's actually happening in that street, in that area. Um, not just, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I, I think, hey, I mean, there's, there's, um, 
op- opportunities. But if but if you if you look at that the side, so if you go to, to that green section, so you've got it, you've got a, a bit to the left here uh, to the lighter green. So that's like a what? Thir- oh, that's thirteen percent. And I think the blue area is probably um, that's industrial. Zero. Yeah. So, so that's what you I'm don't doing. one one thing I like to notice on here is that this area here, um, there's a there. They're smushed between it's it's squished between housing commission. So, is it on the path of being in housing commission? So, for me, um, having gone on the ground in Deception Bay, Deception Bay is made up of two areas. There is literally two, not literally, but figuratively speaking, there are two suburbs within Deception Bay. So, there is the road here the arterial road that leads on to and this is why everyone loves deception bay because i'm just going to go to google maps yeah yeah it's a it's a good one google maps just to kick off the, uh, yeah so google. everyone loves deception bay from uh looking at it perspective because it looks amazing like it's right near everything it's in the heart of town um it's, it has easy access to the water it is literally on the water itself here. And um, what else? Uh, we're de- we go down here, we're onto North Lakes. We get on here, we get access to the M1. The M1, which is also the Bruce Highway, will take you all the way into the city, which is about a 45-minute, 50-minute drive. So mm-hmm. this suburb is broken down into two parts. The area here, this side of the highway, and this side Seems of the highway. Rough. North Highway, north of the highway, and um, um, south of the highway. Then it's also made up of this little pocket here, which is a lot of more land, uh, like a lot more access to land. And these prices are a little bit more expensive. So this, these pockets are the hot pockets for social housing. Having gone on the ground, and um, a, a lot of this, a lot of our research that we've gone through, and a lot we've gotten a lot of help from a guy on the ground, Mr. Hayden West, who's been awesome to help us um, help us out um, and give us the run through on the area. Now, I own a property around here. Um, Mate, I, you, own, you own it on the? Do you, do you, is it? Would they call it the wrong side of the highway, Joe? Or, it's the wrong not, side of the tracks. If I was to purchase, the, it is the wrong side of the tracks to be buying. This is where you've got different type of, like, yeah, it's not an area where I would be considering buying because there's no owner-occupier appeal here. It looks like it's beautiful on the water, but when you get deep down into these areas, it doesn't feel like a nice place to live. Now, I don't want to put a town down, but if I'm more interested, you'll start to see, like, okay, let's just go on the street here and see how this actually looks. There's, Um, there's There's a dude in Duke Beer Hall. Mate, you got, we got to get got to check out the dude in Duke Beer Hall. Uh, when when, when was this? When was this photo taken though? Just to make sure that because it, the thing with Google is they often are quite yeah. can be a bit old. Was yeah. it twenty twenty two? So I think this this probably yeah, is recent. I'm probably, I'm probably not going to be able to get my case in point. But um, this side of the highway is where there's a lot more owner occupier appeal. So for me, this is the type of area that you should be considering looking into we want to cross off the industrial site um get rid of all of this get rid of all of this get rid of some of the get rid of the social housing get rid of the areas that are smushed in between the social housing now what i wanted to talk about jeff what are your thoughts on the supply potential for the area because supply and demand if there's pricing pressure if the demand's coming we've got all of this area here coming online we're going to struggle it's going to put up struggle street for us yeah, I mean that's that, that's a that's a thing that I um, I mean I, I I I suspected if you looked at the so that data we were looking at before the microburbs, given that it was a bit older, I I think um, if we look at that, I suspect it might may have, I mean I don't know you, you you've been there on the ground, um, but my my gut feel is that it's, uh, because just looking at the price activity, the prices have I mean a lot of parts of Southeast Queensland have increased. Um, but you sort of the other things when you're looking at desire really you want to things look at things like cafes you want to look at sort of restaurants all those sort of things as well so just sort of understand and, and that's where if you're not sort of on the that's where a lot of these tabs we, we don't need to go for all these because otherwise even the lifestyle so uh, you've got I mean I, I, some of this stuff is a bit uh, I mean, a bit, that's great. 
bit fastidious. It's like the um, the hipster score. I mean, so but you look at you. I mean, lifestyle. I, I don't know about some of this stuff. It's a bit. It's a bit sort of. Uh, I don't know. It's. It does give you information, but you want to dig. This is only a first, the first part of the, the research. But to your point about supply and demand, I, I think looking at Google Google Earth, there, it looks as if, I mean, you'd have to understand more about. But I, I think there potentially could be um, could be some supply coming on the market there, and I mean uh-huh. we don't know what those. But what are the, now like now Hogwarts. Big Jeff? I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna start to blow your mind here now. This if Planning anyone tool. is looking. Yes, if anyone is looking anywhere in Morton Bay, it, sorry, uh, d- yeah, more, more, what's it called? Morton Bay, yeah. Um, Morton Bay this whole Council, area. Yeah. Morton Bay has created the most amazing platform that I found for a council. It's, there are some other really good ones, but Morton Bay is absolutely spectacular. The, this map is not updated and it looks like they folded it. <laughs> it looks like they folded the map here. Um, but this actually helps give you a bit of understanding around Uh, Two things. One, the zoning. So we can start to understand, hey, this area is a bit rough, but it's in urban neighbourhood. It's in next generation neighbourhood. It's in suburban neighbourhood. So all of these have different um, zoning changes. So although my, my property is in an area that is not that great right now, it does have the ability to get units put onto it. So that is something to consider when you're investing for the long term. Okay. Have you because bought have you bought the bowling club yet, Joe? Or is it no, still a bowling club? Yes. Well that yeah, it's still a bowling oh, sorry, club. Sorry, maybe I shouldn't say that. You're hitting 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 sore hitting a sore point there, mate. Yes. I bought a property thinking that um, I bought it through a buyer's agent who said it was going to be the best thing ever. And they said, you know what, next door, you can buy next door in a couple of years when it comes on the market. Turns out it's a bowling club. So I can't buy a bowling club, I don't think. You probably, you probably um, could. Probably could. Let's let's make you it probably. Up. You could literally find my house if you if you, you get too creative, um, yeah. but you can't do much worse than what the tenants done to it already. <laughs> but anyway, we're I'm I'm rambling here. What I wanted to show you was that demand supply ratio when it comes to the flood the flood zone. So where is the mm. f, f, f there's bushfire hazards? Flood flood so, hazards. Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. So here we can start to see where are the where are the fire hazards and how do they impede? Is that going to affect our property? So this area up here um, might be a little bit more um, it, it, like that looked. That's interesting, right? Do you want to buy in a, a, fire, a bushfire zone? Will that increase your insurances? Flood hazard. Here we go. This is going to help us understand the supply that's going to be coming on the market potentially. There's no more land available because these are all flood zones and bushfire. Like they'll they'll build in some of these zones, but this is the interesting thing. If we're going to have a thirty percent increase of population by twenty forty one in this area, this is all bush. This is all flood zone, so you can't build in it anymore. There is nowhere else for you to kind of build except for all these cashed up people down here that have a lot of land and they can sell it to developers to be able to do that. Um, so all of a sudden, this tool is just giving you some really good insights around the demand supply of the does it, um Does this tool, because I, I looked at this quickly, but I mean, there's just so many, so many rabbit holes you can go down. Does it tell you whether, what type of flood it is? Is it a one in a hundred year flood? Is it a, what type of flood does it? Or Priority does it, development area. Uh, yeah, you can go into the details. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can, you can go into the details of what, what it actually is. Um, but we'll share this in the show notes or the link or whatever the heck you put them. Um, but that is something to be aware of with Deception Bay. So we've got we've got two made up areas here. We've got the split in the road. Now I'm not saying that these are terrible investments, right? So one thing I want to think about, one thing I want people to think about is if this property here is four hundred thousand dollars and you can pick it up for um, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and it's not in a flood zone, it's in an area that's going going to help out going to grow is that a bad purchase if it's fifty thousand dollars less um, maybe not as long as it's got as long as it's got as long as it's uh, got developments or some some kind of value add for me joe i, I love to buy yeah. properties with value add so i mean maybe that makes it cheaper anyway as well so if i can pick something up because then i'm then i'm somewhat de-risking i'm not saying that that buying a, a value add property removes risk from you but you can sort of you can you can potentially force some value in a property if, if it also ticks a lot of other boxes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, this is why 
I'm banging on about my property in this area not being great. Yeah, it sucks to own because it's always getting destroyed by tenants, but it's in a development area that's going to grow. The the pricing pressure's there. Would I rather one in here, which is an easy ma- lifestyle, you know, location, tenants are really good, it's nice and easy? Obviously, it depends. I'm not just, you know, rubbishing on one suburb, um, but it really depends. Now, let's yeah. go to the data side of things. Uh, when it comes to to Moreton Bay. Now, let's talk through suburb trends. While, um, while, while, while Joe gets this, I was just going to say, what, what is ever? I haven't read the comments. So I don't know. Are people loving this? Are people like, is there anything you want to see more stuff on? Because I know we're throwing a lot of information at you. And the purpose of this session is to really get people to kind of, uh, if, if you want to do the research yourself, then, then I suppose these are some of the tools you can look at it, along with, getting on, on the ground as well. I mean, it's, it's a funny way to say it, getting on the ground. Like just literally, get, yeah, sort of visiting on the ground. Yeah, tell, tell us about the, the, uh, what, the, what the numbers are saying, Doe. Joe, it's called Doe. So if we have a look, again, another free tool that is absolutely amazing here is um, the suburb trends. So we can see here, high-level overview, three months ago, Deception Bay had a solid average monthly sales of 34 sold per month. The time taken is 35 days on market. 12 months ago, it was 56. So again, days on market are dropping. The median house price is 489,000. For the SA3, that's a 25% change. So again, we're talking about the SA3, which in, includes Burp and Gary. Um, and then the rent is 370. And that looks like an 8% change. So here it is here. We've got, <laughs> God, house and unit vacancy rate, 0.0%. That is not sure. is that actually right though, Joe? Is it? it should we? Should well, it's zero point three twelve months ago. Zero point four. Sorry, yeah. twelve months ago and three. They're saying there's there's no houses to rent in Deception Bay apparently. Yeah, That's... over twenty one days. Oh, okay. um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so that that's a good insight to go over. And then when we start to look at housing inventory, what is what is the inventory levels? It's dripping down. You want to see like a stable, you want to see it kind of going down um, and housing listings dropped. listings dropped as well. And then units, we don't really talk about units for that market. And then uh, what's that rent? House rents, four, two, 385, 415. So it's not, wow. it's not too shabby. Um, now, this is a super useful tool to understand the type of property that you're purchasing in the area because we also have our domain tool. So now we're going to start breaking down um, how to choose what type of property to get in that area because what we want is to be buying, well, this is one one way of going about it, right, is to be, I need to zoom in, is to be buying um, in the market where everyone else is buying as well. We don't want to be buying a six hundred dollars to $800,000 property here if it's, only one point, you know, point one six. We want to be buying around that four hundred to six hundred mark because that's where all the that's where the majority of the sales are. So we can get swept up into that. Yeah, I mean, it it, it really depends on the the, the per. I mean, I, I'd, I'd agree with you with with a one sort of minor caveat. You'd sort of say, un, un, unless there's a particular sort of reason for looking at, like, if you're buying a, a luxurious kind of property, which is then going to I mean, and that's a completely different strategy. So, but for what for generally, I'd say a lot of people would be so sort of looking at what Joe's looking to do. Yeah, for for um, for because okay. So one thing to talk about here is, do I want to buy a a property that's three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, but takes a hundred and nine days on market? Like, it's a it's been on the market for hundred and nine days, and the median for the area is what was it um you know 50 47 or something like it's that 30, 35, wasn't it? it's come, it's come yeah down. so this is and these are different data sources right so they're all going to be different so i don't want to buy a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar two bed house here because it's going to take ages for it to be on the market you might be able to negotiate down and <laughs> this is where this is what i did for one of my other deals was i bought a two bedroom place with the goal to add a third bedroom to it which then automatically moved my three hundred and forty nine thousand to a four hundred and ten thousand, um, and it then fell within that bracket. So the two brackets here that are quite interesting: one hundred and forty five and one hundred and eighteen for three to four bedroom places. So that's the type of asset 
that you're going to be wanting to look for because the days on market are very, uh, very quick. And that's also where the majority of sales are going. It's, uh, then- it's interesting that there's, um, why, why, are there, why why are there so many five bedroom houses in the area, Joe? I mean, dude, can you explain? I mean, is that, is that maybe yeah, like a- 22. Yeah, I mean, well, you, I mean, when I say so many, there's not that many, but um, yeah, I mean, 22 is not much. It seems like a few, though. I mean, what's, uh, I mean, I, I five bedrooms. I mean, maybe that's, uh, would they potentially be duplexes or something? Are we talking? Well, some of the Queenslanders, some of the Queenslanders, you can um, do the garage into a, a um, into an extra room. So yeah, you might actually be spot on. They've converted the garage into a, yeah, a sure five bedder, or it might be one of these, like one of these massive properties over here. I'm guaranteed, yeah. there's a couple of five bedders within this mix. Yeah, um, but look, yeah, they're already yeah. subdividing it. Yeah. Um, As we said. Okay, so so we've got our overall, we've got our kind of price range now. We've got that four ten to four ninety three. Um, and then we just, uh, we won't go to the property just yet. So then <laughs> we'll go to Deception Bay, but now we're narrowing down our search. Now, if this is out of your price range, you're not even doing this, right? Because you know that the, the, the best, you want to buy the best property at the best price in the best location for the buy, for the buyer brief. That's the kind of thing I say, which means what is, what is going to be the best property in this area? Just because your budget's $4 million, you should not be buying a $4 million property in Deception Bay. So you try and work it within the range that is the best for that area. So then we have a look. We want a maximum land size. We're not going to want anything over 1,000 square meters. Um, why can't I search? Because I haven't typed in the location. And then you can start going on to the market and seeing what's on. Now, there's quite a few, but you do you jump into map view, Joe, or how do you? So, well, this is the thing, right? Now I know where I want to buy. I don't need to look through a big list of all of them. I can just jump into map view. <laughs> how do I get rid of? Anyway, I'll just zoom in. Get into the map view and start to see what kind of prices and what stuff is on the market. And we can see that the pocket that we're interested in, there are a number on the market there. Um, so what have we got here? Some new development going on here, here a bit of infill location. Um, 65 Windsor, 590,000. Maybe that's an opportunity. Um, but we want to look in our little hot pocket here, which is near the school, um, that more owner-occupier focus. And you can see there's a bit more of a price premium here when they don't list the uh, for sale there. Um, Lynette Court, for sale. So these will all be around that kind of... Oh, yeah, re- well, in this area, actually, at the moment, it's get it's pretty it's um it's pretty tight. Not that I'm saying that this is an area. Uh, there are far better opportunities. One thing I want to say is there are far better opportunities within this area. You should of you should have Bay. seen uh, you should have seen the, the chats that uh, Hayden was sending me prior to that. He was he was a bit uh, perplexed about why we're doing DB perception. Based. Yes, we're only doing this region because. Um, people asked for it and everyone, the crowd voted. We do not buy in Deception Bay. When you look at the area, look at Redcliffe, Kippering, Rothwell, North Lakes, Mango Hill. The reason I was going to say, the thing about the, uh, if you go into somewhere like a, like a Kippering or Redcliffe, you get, you're going to need a budget of between seven to 900,000, aren't you, Joe? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, you, that's very true. That's very true. But deception. So on the desirability, if we were to put a score on Deception Bay, where would you put Deception Bay as like a unit number for desirability? Like, no, like no, no pressure, no pressure, Joe. I hadn't hadn't thought of it. Mate, I've never been to the area, so I don't. But uh, look, I would probably give it a, I'll give it a, I'll give it a, a just a pass mark. So I'll give it a five or six. Or maybe okay. maybe I'm being, I, a bit gener- I'm being a bit generous. Having explored Deception Bay, being on the ground in Deception Bay and experienced the Deception Bay lifestyle, I give Deception Bay a three for desirability. Um, yeah. It is literally, there's there's just nothing exciting about it. Yes, there is water there, but we, this yeah. is not Sydney Harbour. This yeah. is... Oh, I, I, this, I can imagine, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not even Redcliffe. I mean, Redcliffe Beach, I've been there. It's, it's, it's quite nice. Redcliffe is absolutely spectacular. So when we're talking about desirability drivers, that's the demand focus there. So um, you drive past Deception Bay 
It's just like, you know, when I said, actually, here's a good point. Yeah. You know, I said like highways don't go through towns. They can go around towns. This, this Deception Bay Road, people don't turn off it, except for there's a nice KFC there, which is delicious. Um, you don't actually need to go into Deception Bay for any reason. Um, sorry, I don't mean to, you know, offend anyone in Deception Bay, but desire. You are, you're you're offending every, anybody who you just, nobody from Deception Bay is ever going to watch our show again, so. No, but there is, well, in terms of desirability, from a desirability score, I think everyone can understand, everyone can acknowledge that Red Cliff, Kipper Ring, Rothwell, North Lakes are far more desirable than, um, than Deception Bay. Um, so anyway, there are still opportunities out there though. There's opportunities absolutely everywhere. And how do you, how do you take advantage of those? Um, the, the one that looks, so deal, working with, um, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Hayden West. He has found us a fantastic on-market opportunity here. Uh, it's recently listed. So let's go through this opportunity here, Jeff. Yeah, um, let's do it. Oh, geez, so, renovation potential. Jeez. That's, that's, that's a plus. So we can do a bit of renovation potential here. Um, talk, us, talk us through the specs. Is it, a, is it a three? Sorry, I didn't say. Oh, sorry. Three, yeah, sorry. Three, two, and three. two. On 690 square meters, um, what is what I initially, you know, first thoughts is that it slopes towards the uh, towards the uh, driveway, oh, whatever that's the road. <laughs> yeah, um, which which means you don't have to, you won't potentially have to do any sewage stuff if you're doing a development. Um, so we got a three, two, and two, and here it is, nice little stock standard in the nicer part of town. Oh, we've got a podcaster in our mix as well. Look at this. <laughs> Jeez, here we go. Get him, get him on the show. Um, so this is the kind of property that you should expect. It is a um, it is a bit of an odd shaped block. Yeah. Um, so, I it's however, really, it's, tough to develop. it's a bit odd. But if you can get next door, you kind of reshape it a little bit more, and you you might be able to do a little little magic with it. So or so what, what's um. I mean, I, I don't know how did I don't know. Yeah, I think Hayden just um, was messaging you, so you probably didn't have a chance to chat to him. But did you get any kind of? Uh, you haven't spoken. You haven't got any intel as what what they what they're sort of looking to potentially sell it for, or what? I think it would probably go for. Oh yeah, so indication. Oh yeah, sales wise, um, this will go for about that six forty to six fifty, six sixty. Um, that's the kind of price range that you can kind of expect. From should, we, should we look at should we look at the history? I'm, I'm interested to see the history of the property and just kind of I mean I don't oh know. okay yeah okay just sort of see what true, yeah. yeah and is it currently rented or what's the um I mean, I'm I don't just, know. You know asking lots of questions here throw me in the throwing it in um, yeah let's have a look you you actually go to you go the whole um you go the whole nine yards man I just I would just go to history well. No, it doesn't. Uh, oh, it doesn't show it uh, when it's listed. It's a bit difficult. Um, uh, yeah. So in June, uh, so it's been on the day. It's been on the market for seven days, um, and it was built so in fifty nine thousand. Fifty nine thousand. So if everyone who has the deal crunch calculator, which everyone gets for free anyway when they when they uh, download it, you go here. We look at what it is. Um, we're saying six thirty, six forty, six fifty. Um, so from April 2022, it has had a 12.7% growth rate since that there time. Yes. Year on year growth. So that's absolutely massive. Obviously, past performance is not an indicator of future performance, um, but it is an interesting number to look at. What I like to see is actually, because that's so long ago, I would like to have seen other sales um, in the air, like, more sales recently to kind of get a bit more of a realistic number. Yeah, you, you, you probably um, you probably want to see one one sort of cycle. Um, it, you, you want to, you'd like to see transacted each property cycle. Um, yeah. As, as in, I'm not not saying every property cycle runs for seven to ten years, but you sort of say that um, typically you sort of seven years for me to so ten years is a good sort of time frame um, because of course then you've got bigger sort of time uh, cycles as well. But you'd be yeah. interested to see what this something like this would have sold for back in I don't know 2010 or something. 2010 might have yeah. probably would have sold for. I mean, I think it would have seen probably a lot of growth in the last 12 to 
18 to 24 months, I think that's where you would have seen a lot of uplift. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. Um, so again, this area, it's got that more higher owner occupier appeal. The median house price is above the average. So that's six, that 650. We're starting to tick into that average price range where it's like, oh, this is, this is a bit scary for the area, but this is why you need to get on the ground and understand the area. This is, is this expensive the- for this area, but it's not expensive for this area where people actually want to live. Is it is it possible, Joe? And you, you probably um, we probably can't do this, but I, I'd love I'd love a tool that would tell me where the, where you've got uh, where, where you can sort of look at um, the 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 median house prices or the growth for certain pockets of a suburb. Do we have some of that, or probably don't? I'm the tool that can do that. No, yeah, you are. Uh, uh, no, we- so what, what you can do, and what I what I always like to do as well is just it's a bit of a hard graft. Um, but what you can do is go street by street and pop the uh, look at the properties um, and see what the capital growth is over that period of time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if, yeah, that's um, yeah, it's, that's 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 the way I used to, used to sort of do it. I'll still do it as well, and it's sort of what um, yeah, it's kind of we we have to be able to build a tool to be able to do that manually. Oh, automatically. I mean, that would be cool. But yeah, that's that's a, yeah. fan, a very uh, insight. What what are people's thoughts on on that uh, uh, that, that those insights and just that uh, deep dive into Morton Bay and the Deception Bay here? I suppose. What are you looking at now, Joe? You're looking at another one. Here we go. So this property was sold recently, twelve yep. years ago, for three hundred and thirty thousand. Yep. And it's... but then it was sold three hundred eighty thousand um, in twenty nineteen. Was it? <laughs> So look at the different, like this is what way this, oh, sorry, I'm not zoomed in. So this property here, which is 12 Lynette Court or whatever, um, sold for 330000 on November 2019. Um, then 10 years later, it went for three eighty. So it it was, it's it's not really grown much, 50000 in 10 years. But then from that, from 10 years to now, from two years, five months, twenty-seven days, it Just should be around that. Well, what does what does Core Logic say? What are they saying here? Four hundred and seventy-four. Yeah, I, I think. If you, if if if, you, if they're going to sell that to me for four seven, oh, what's the? If if somebody wants to sell it for four seventy, I'll um I'll, I'll buy it every day of the week. Yeah, uh, I know you said this. I'm not I'm not saying that somebody should offer four seventy because let's just because this property is on the market now, is it? Yeah. Jeez, I probably shouldn't yeah. be saying something. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no. Um, awesome. Okay. So oh, we one thing. Yeah. We haven't done, yeah. Our, we haven't done our second, uh, the, the one, oh, the let's... only sequel easy. We just got so our... caught up. We got so caught up. Let's run our second sponsor and then we'll be back for the final final word. The final countdown. <laughs> final countdown. Sorry, Jack. I'm too quick, buddy. Commercial property offers the highest cash flow in Australian property investing, offering exceptionally higher yields than residential. Now we're talking eight to 10% net yields. That's cash after all expenses, not this two to 6% gross that we see in the residential space. So for those that are starting out on their commercial investing journey, it can be exciting, but it's also a step not to be taken lightly. The expertise of a commercial buyer's agent can pay dividends to help you secure that high cash flow and high growth potential property. And this is why we recommend Steve Polisi of Polisi Property. With over six years experience in the space, Steve has over 1,200 property transactions under his belt. He has seen it all and knows the best locations right for growth. In a previous life, Steve was a chartered mechanical and structural engineer, so he draws on his mathematical and analytical skills that he's developed to break down what works best in commercial property. As with engineering, same goes with commercial property. It's based primarily on the numbers. So if you're curious about diversifying into commercial property, you have access to $100,000 in cash or in equity, book a call with Steve today and find that perfect asset for you. Here we go, Joe. Well done, buddy. I've just got to back on yeah. to yeah, just, Hayden's been heckling us the whole time. Jeez, he's just, just saying, <laughs> yeah. Gotta well, got love Hayden. Well, my um the thing that interests me about Kabulcha, uh sorry, about uh, Morton Bay is and it's kind of talking to that supply side of things, the supply pressure. There is a nine point five billion dollar project 
to create and gather out this kabucha kabucha west area now there's a lot of land supply here but if you look into some of the pockets that are yeah, already geez. built are you looking are you looking at something Tim? uh oh, sorry Jerry. yeah i've been on the Sorry, I was, I was on the screen. <laughs> I thought I was sharing my screen. Oh, no, I am. No, I'm sharing this screen, yeah? I mean, yeah. kombucha, yeah. Yeah. Sharing this screen, yeah. So um, when it comes to supply and demand, what you want to understand is like, where are the actual demand drivers? Because what's going to happen, there's going to be a lot of supply coming on in this region. But the way that they're building out these areas are they trying to create communities within communities? So everywhere has a Woolworths, everywhere has a liquor land, everywhere has a um, a restaurant, everywhere has a thing. Kind of think exactly. about it like a little bit, like if you're from Sydney, like a Glenmore Park. Like Glenmore Park has a lot of stuff in and it makes its own community. They've got that little hub in the middle and then it spreads out between everything. So if you're from Glenmore Park, you probably don't leave Glenmore Park too much except to go to the plaza. Oh, mate, Plaza. What do you mean the Plaza? Who goes to Penrith Plaza? Bloody hell. Back in the days, man, I used to go to Penrith. Yeah, I know it's, 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 um, it's, it's interesting. I mean, and, and you, you sort of raise, it's kind of like, a, well, next week we're going to have an interesting session on, on, one, on, the, on the suburb that people love to talk about. So you'll have to tune in for that one. But, um, well, everyone shows, everyone shows this suburb, but there is a lot of opportunity and a lot of money and infrastructure going into Moreton Bay. Um, along here, there is the mill going in. Um, there is North Lakes, which is driving, which is a, a great entry level point. We've got the Bruce Highway, um, Kippering, Redcliffe. There is awesome opportunity getting close to the city. Now, getting closer to Brisbane, we're starting to get priced out. Now, a good thing that, so tools, let's talk about kind of tools that are really good. There's an awesome one called Heat Maps, which just gives you a high level snapshot. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't actually. This is, um, yeah, it's why we told you this one, Joe. Go straight to Sydney. Go. Here we go. Deceptions Bay postcode is 45, 4508. And yep. we can look um, at prices by suburb, medium house price. So we can start to see median house price is 438. We already know that that's not the real median. It's the medium of the others. And you just keep going down. You can start to see what fits my price point. Where is my money going to be best spent? So you start and to see... Of course, what I was yeah. going to say, and of course, but um, what, what I will say, and, and people point this out, is it, it is a lagging indicator. And we, we get heckled for it and people talk about meetings because because the problem with meetings is they, they will, um, they, they may not necessarily reflect what properties are selling for because it depends on when the data is reported. But, uh, yeah, exactly. Look, look at that. Yes, yes. So that, this, uh, this that, website. Is that, New, is that Newport there that's 980,000? 980,000 in Newport, and that's what they're going to be creating in um, this other suburb up here, where is Burpengary? So up in here. So right now, where where is it gone? I can't see it. Oh, yeah, there. You just type, type right. it in, Joe. No, the, you oh, yeah. no you, need, you need the postcode. It's not the best thing. And then we can have a look at growth, which is a pretty cool platform. Go, everyone check this platform out. It's actually quite good. So you can see what's had the growth. And what hasn't had the growth now? I'm. Starting it reminds to me of the old uh, realestate.com tool where you could actually do that. So they've pretty much replicated what you could do there. I'm in the I'm in the Gold Coast now. I've lost myself. Anyway, <laughs> this is a fun tool to play around with. The most yeah. important tool to play around with is the Morton Bay Council. It's going to give you the understanding of all the flood zones, what's going on in the area. Look at the place. It looks like Dante's Inferno, and then it's all yeah. But... yeah. Um, so yeah. flood zones are crucially important for this, uh, for Moreton Bay, for Brisbane and for everywhere. So be can aware I, of those. Can I ask a question, Joe, for, and I'm surprised nobody, I'm, I haven't seen any ask this, but let's just say I'm not looking at Moreton Bay and, and I, I mean, I, I'm gonna, let's, I'll, I'll just sort of say that I, I, if I'm not, um, if I don't want to buy there, um, if I want to buy in, I don't know, I'm just trying to think about Ipswich, I mean, watch those words, I don't have to buy in Ipswich, but let's let's pretend that I want to buy in a different suburb, different area. Is there, like, how how, how can people um, sort of find these kind of, do they have, they have to do it manually mostly, don't they? If they want, I don't know, what's another, even what, what's, let's say, I don't know, um, another council area, I'm just trying to think, if you wanted to look at, what's that suburb down in, Victoria, a regional regional place. Um, the 
not not Shepherds so and the other one. You can yeah, so you can pay for platforms that have this type of data in it. Um, the whole point of this session wasn't to show you the data that that I play around with and, and purchase and, and and pay money for. It was to show you what you can get freely available. But all you do is you just type in Ipswich um, flood zone. What's a property map? Let's go to Ipswich. What does it look like? Um, and now it's not going to. I don't they, know. Yes. they won't have as won't have as good as uh, detailed information like the the planning sort of the overlays and all sort of stuff follow though, which is a bit yeah potentially. So you then type yeah, it's actually really hard to find this link, like to find how to get access to this. Um, so we'll share the link to that. So um, there you go. Yeah, um, and that was that was a great session. I mean, I um, I, I feel uh, I, I was excited actually doing the doing the research and and digging into it. I, I felt a bit disadvantaged not having uh, been to the area recently, um, like yourself or sort of yeah. Which uh, and I suppose if I owned in the area, I probably would would know it a little better. So that probably explains why you um, why you sort of know it very well. So it was ironic that it got chosen. But um, what 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 do people well, really? I'm investing. <laughs> that's where I'm putting money. I need to know it uh, like the like the back of my hand. So I, you go through all the streets, and the only way you're going to identify these spots are just to get get on there and do it. <laughs> yeah, the the interesting thing that I, that I'd like to sort of point out, if, if people hadn't real uh, hadn't sort of picked it up, or because we sort of gloss over a little bit, is is actually understanding well why certain areas are selling for certain. Um, sort of prices because you could you could if you didn't sort of know the area if you weren't a local if you if you sort of looked at that sort of upper sort of part of or the the more northern part of Deception Bay you say oh geez they're going for a song in here they're going for 350 400 450 yeah. but you sort of say well okay is there a, what what is the reason there's such that big the big price dis dis disparity because I, I sort of look I look for opportunity I'm an op no opportunities, but I, I like to look at sort of arbitrage and say, well, okay, is there a reason, and and is this going to gentrify? Because it, it sometimes it can, but I mean, I suppose that's a risk. Um, so that's a yeah. Well, if you can hedge your bets into a way that you can get into a growing area and get an afford affordable rate, then absolutely, absolutely. Well, we got some because, fireworks because going on. Oh, it's Aussie day at nine o'clock. But what, so what, what I was going to say is because what, what would your thoughts be? Um, say, say a property on the, the border of both. Both would, would that sort of? I mean, I, I don't know if you know this, but is is there an opportunity to say maybe pick it up for 400, 420? Because I would imagine that people that that want to live in Deception Bay. I mean, let's let's pretend that we do want to live in Deception Bay, and they can't afford that 600, 650, 700. But they say, "Oh, look, I want to live close to the, the good areas." Um, could you see? Could you envision? And we're not—we don't have crystal balls here. But I could envision somebody saying, "Okay, look, I can't pay seven hundred, but I've got a budget of six hundred. I'll go to this area that's maybe might not be as good, but I might be able to pick it up for five fifty, five sixty, and and all of a sudden you sort of say you start to see that ripple effect. What is that? Yeah. What is that strategy? Well, yeah, that's exactly what you're talking about there, the ripple effect. Um, and you see it happen all the time. It Eventually, in 2041, people are going to be pushed all the way up and west out. And they're going to be priced out because they're going to, it's like the area is going to get nicer and nicer and nicer and nicer. And people are going to have to do it. You know, it's the same as, um, it's the same as kind of like, you know, where I live, Cronulla. It's in Cronulla. And then, there, it just keeps going into Sutherland Shire. Um, but there's other advantages in the other areas. But absolutely, people will eventually be pushed out and it will get more affordable and more affordable because you are then close to all of these developments that are going on and the lifestyle drivers that are driving it. So, yeah. But at the moment, for what is yeah. there, do you want to put your money in a place that doesn't necessarily be... Is that going to be the best use of your money? Are you going to make the most amount of money? You're going to know this one, Jeff. In the quickest amount of time with the least amount of risk and the least amount of frustration, buying in there, you can pick up a deal anywhere. Um, but is it going to be a long-term capital growth play? I don't I don't think so in that area. I'm, I work in five to six pockets of Moreton Bay that I think that I see and back up with data to be able to see hot growth. Um, and uh, yeah, Deception Bay is a great one, but it's not, it's not the best one. Yeah, yeah, great. Could you? I, mean, I, I won't ask that, but I kind of wanted to. Uh, no, I, I wanted to. Yeah. Otherwise, so so yeah. let's uh, let's let's get into the Q and A. Let's. So it doesn't have to be on Deception Bay. It doesn't have to be in Morton Bay. Uh, 
don't 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 ask me what I had. I was going to say don't ask me what I had for dinner three weeks ago because I probably won't remember that. But um, but yeah, what's um? I think there's already been some questions. Is it just or is it just Hayden saying that we shouldn't? That uh, what have we got here. Yeah. Thanks for the session. Really enjoyed it. No worries, Aaron. Just curious what the coastline of Deception Bay is like. Any places to swim, cafes? It seems like the north part of the bay is closer to the coast. Is it possible that side could gentrify? I probably wouldn't. I mean, that is, doesn't it? I mean, because isn't, isn't it the river? I mean, not a river, but it kind of, it's not really that appealing, that particular part of the bay, isn't it? That's, that's my understanding. Yeah, it's, it's not the most uh, appealing part, but there are expensive properties there. Like on the waterfront, there's million dollar properties. Um, with a with a decent land size, so um, yeah, it you can get. A, yeah, it can get a yeah, so we'll jump on the Esplanade because it's not so it's not so bad there. So yeah, absolutely. Um, but the infrastructure is not yet there just yet. There is a cafe on the corner up here. Um, yeah, there it is. No mate. So they are. There is some commercial lots in there, and maybe is there, there's, no bunnings, there's no bunnies. There's no bunnies. There's no bunnies. Oh, there's no bunnies. Unfortunately, of sorry. No bunnies. <laughs> of course, there's no bunnies. Um, and yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, that's not a bad day. <laughs> but yeah, yeah some of these day. houses, some of these houses will go for a million bucks mm. and the large lot sizes. So the thing is a house like this with water views, is it going to ever disappear? Well, it might get flooded, um, <laughs> might disappear <laughs> with global warming. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely it could, it could gentrify out. But then if you go to a place that's already got um, infrastructure and things in place. Like you're going yeah. to be waiting a long, a long, long time, and it doesn't seem like there's many plans for it to, to happen. So, do you want to wait for that? Whereas when you go to a place like Redcliffe, which I think you're priced out, to be honest, um, it's way too expensive right now. Um, not way too expensive, but we've got the same deal here. Um, but they have shops all up along here. The, the beach, yeah, the beach is uh, beach is pretty good as well, and um, yeah, Redcliffe even sort of eight or nine years ago, there's there was some very kind of um, not exclusive but kind of more upmarket restaurants. So, but yeah, good 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 question. It's kind of one of those ones you want to consider when you're actually looking at a, a place. And I suppose a gentrification. We we had Pete uh, Peter Kalizos on, and he's depression based. Oh, jeez. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think I think there's. I, I, I like to look at the uh, brighter side of life. So maybe it's. Um, but yeah, Peter Kalizos kind of did some studies on that, and he sort of says it can take anywhere from zero to thirty years. Over supply of pork rolls. That was uh, was Hayden. I think he said that wasn't it. Was that um, was that tone toned up? But uh, yeah, it's sort of good. Bunnings, Bunnings is great for tracking new areas of growth potential. That, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't rely solely on Bunnings. I mean, that's. Coles will do a lot of research, employ specific staff specifically for property planning. Yeah, I mean that's that's not a, not a. I mean these are all kind of. I mean I wouldn't put this as one of my ten factors I look at, but it's a nice and a. Yeah, is. this is this is actually a great point that we didn't do in our research when it came to like those those four key drivers and employment. We didn't talk about how their income, and we didn't talk about the income. I, the I, mentioned, I mentioned it. I mean, I, I, yeah. I said I look at if you, if there are in retail, um, if there's a higher proportion of retail, then you sort of say, I mean, tip, and, and that's what microverbs actually does. You can look at the, but we sort of, yeah. So microverb, but yeah, good point. I like that one. Yeah, so, it's a great point because it should be factored in. And and it's just a number standalone. Like, what is the income? This, in, this area is, um, you know, 2000 they earn $2,000 a week. Is that what does that actually mean? You've got to look at it compared to the median for the area, the SA three, the SA one. Um, what's your five pockets you mentioned, Joe? I know Jeff wanted to ask. Yeah, <laughs> nice one. Uh, I think I think you, have to, you probably have to feel free. <laughs> yeah, I feel uh, I can't give away all the secrets. Even um, better, even better. What pay oh, tools do you use? That's a good question. There's heaps of paid tools to to do. There's SQM Research, there's Archistar, there's RP Data. Um, so they're some of the, the the top ones to go for. There's um, uh, in, in Property Investor. Um, yeah. What else am I thinking of? There's, um, um... there's pulling data from... Um, so I pull a lot of data from... Um, uh, like oh, okay. you can get a, a access to APIs from realestate.com.au and domain.com.au and pull that data together. 
there's data from suburb trends that you can that you can get as well. So you kind of collate those type of things and pull it all together to get a big, big bigger snapshot of the whole area. Um, the, the yeah, the interesting question nobody's really sort of looked at um, is is sort of saying um, how do we buy more property? Like, I mean, that's that's kind of I mean we talked about that a little bit last week. So it's like for the the session last week about uh, so, so the um, I suppose the the thing that's uh, to answer the back end of that question that Simon's I'll just bring it up quickly doesn't make it worthwhile. Um, a, a oh. tool is a tool is only as good as the person who's using it. I would say. Because you can you can have I mean it's like anything whether you, whether you're a you can you can go and buy the best um, the best sort of you know, best something to install electrical appliance but if you don't know how to use it properly I, I would sort of say it's probably potentially dangerous because you're just going to go to the one that looks the most appealing but you might not sort of pick up that nuance or, or the the knowledge or the experience of the kind of somebody who's been buying for, I don't know of, has a multi a multi-property portfolio and all that kind of good stuff. So would you, let's say, somebody said, would you buy and keep a ring if the house boarded on the flood zones but has never flooded? I think this is bordering almost close to uh, too specific, but um, I mean, I don't know. I think it's, it, this is this is from Kira, Kira Lee. I would say, I mean, if that, I don't, I don't really know. You've you mentioned Kippering a couple of times, Joe, so I, I might leave. I'll, I'll answer this generally and just say, does that does that hit my goals? Um, I would, if, if it hits my goals of what kind of growth would I be projecting? What kind of cash flow do I need? Um, because just saying, would you buy in a suburb for sub six for free bed? I mean, okay, what does that mean? How does that help me hit? So I'll, I'll let yeah. you. What maybe. street is it on? What's the comparison between? Like, is it a good street? Is it a bad street? Is it a street that has growth potential? Um, I mean, in terms of what what I would be looking at is your cash flow from a cash flow perspective. If it is at six hundred k, generally so, speaking, if it's in if it's in a um, flood zone, you're going to pay a higher insurance premium. So um, if you are willing to take that and you can get more rent for that. Absolutely. If the property has no development potential and you have no plans to develop it and it's just going to be the rental income that you're going to suffer from because, sorry, not rental income, the, the negative cash flow from more expensive premium. Sure yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But if you're looking to develop that place, then I would get a, uh, um, what are they called? Oh. Hydraulic and en hydraulic engineer. Um, it's a hydraulic. Think so, or height, whatever. Anyway, and a water engineer to go on site and ensure that you can still build on that block if you do want to develop it down the line. Yeah, That's my answer to that. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, any anybody um. We, we had um. I, I think it's been a great session, Joe. I mean, I, I think we'll we'll probably do this about every six or eight weeks, and 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 each every time we'll do it, we'll sort of get better and better. But um. Yeah, I want to start choosing. I want to choose areas that are that I think actually have legs and potential to them. I know we try and went we went over high level Morton Bay because Morton Bay and Southeast Queensland is absolutely popping off right now. Like the prices that you see on real estate are not the real prices because it is moving so fast there. So, like for instance, we we've put it like we've again. put an we've put an offer on on a property, um, and it was uh. All, uh, ad advertised over 640 and we're putting an offer of $680,000 on it because we know that's cheap. Um, and it will go up to eight. It'll probably, it'll probably not 800. That's silly, but it will go even further. Anyway. Um, I think we had a can great we, session if everyone. Yeah. Can we, um, can we, do we have to, is, is it possible for us to do like, uh, do suburbs in different states? I mean, we could talk this offline, but I, I'd, I'd love to actually analyze a, a part of the Northern territory. So just, I'm, I'm not to say that we should buy there, but just to sort of say, well, is like actually spend and and spend. A, I'm happy to spend a good couple of couple of hours, like six, seven, or eight hours. I've never been in Northern Ter oh, I have been in Northern Territory, so that's a lie. Um, but I'd be I'd be keen to um, sort of understand different parts of Australia that people may not typically look at. But yeah, I mean, maybe we yeah, can I mean, we could try and identify what is the type of asset that we should be buying in there, and what are the more opportune, like what are the better opportunities there, like Deception Bay, right? Um, another great opportunity that we didn't show that again Hayden presented to us was um, a dual yeah. income property interception. Bay. No, I can't. I got to find the link. Blah blah blah. But it's a dual. It sold anyway. Um, Seven hundred thousand, and it gets six hundred dollars a week rent. 
that's pretty good. That's a pretty good cash flow return, um, 4.5% yield or something like that. But those type of opportunities are pretty interesting because it's supporting, it's kind of supporting itself. Um, so yeah, we could definitely do something like that. If everyone enjoyed it, do whatever you have to do to make, I don't know, like things, subscribe or comment. I don't know. Whatever you have to do, do it. <laughs> but yes, this has been an awesome session. Do you want to, do you want to look at you want to, let's finish it up. Yeah. I was, I've got the link for that property, but let's, let's not look at it. Perfect. Amazing. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a, have, a, have a great straight session. everybody. And I uh, yeah, hope you had a great day, friends and family. And we'll be back next week with, with, a, with a guest. And we, we've Very got some guest. heavy hitters, heavy hitters coming up in the next couple of weeks. Exciting times. Right. Let's do it. Cool. Okay. Let's go buy a property crew. See you later. Reach out to Joe if you need help. Yeah. Reach out to me if you need help for Morton Bay. Happy days. Yeah. <laughs> I can certainly see. Hey, everybody. You.